everyone. This is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering, IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the living organisms. And in the current module, we are discussing about the homeostasis and how the homeostasis is being maintained within the living organisms. So, so far what we have discussed in this particular course, we have discussed about the classifications, we have discussed about the evolution, we have also discussed uh, about the different types of cells and their structures and everything. And then we also discuss about the different types of biomolecules and how these biomolecules are regulating the different types of cellular processes, whether these processes are related to the central dogma of life such as replication, transcription and translation or whether they are associated with the specialized functions such as the, uh, the, the vesicular trafficking and as well as the immune responses. And uh, subsequent to that very extensively we have also discussed about the physiological processes, uh, what the physiological processes what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, digestion, we have discussed about the circulatory system and so on. Now in today's lecture we are going to discuss more detail about the homeostasis and what is the uh, way in which the homeostasis can be maintained within the host or the living organisms. So before getting into detail of homeostasis we should understand what is the requirement of the life. The requirement of the life is that it requires the nutrition, it requires the oxygen, water, normal body temperature. So this is more true for the uh, for the warm blood animals and uh, such as mammals, right. Then we also require the maintenance of the appropriate atmospheric pressure because if you do not maintain the appropriate atmospheric pressure that will actually going to cause the rupturing of the body cavities. So, if you remember when we were discussing about the classifications, we have discussed about the different types of cavities what are present in the different organisms and the purpose of these cavities are only to maintain the atmospheric pressure because if there is a increase in atmospheric pressure, the air within the cavities are actually going to uh, play a crucial role in terms of balancing the pressure outside and inside. So, if the if a living organisms actually wants to have these uh, kind of requirements, it also has to run the different types of physiological processes to provide these particular type of requirements. Okay. So, what are the different physiological processes? What we can do? We can actually be able to. Uh, we have discussed about the digestions, and the purpose of digestion is that it is actually going to provide the uh, nutrition, right? Because you are going to take up the uh, large and the complex uh, food and that complex food is actually going to be digested into the monomeric forms and that monomeric form is uh, going to be absorbed into the blood and that is how it is actually going to provide the nutrition. Now this nutrients, nutrition will enter into the blood and uh, through the blood it is actually going to be distributed throughout the body and that is the function of the circulatory system. And what is the purpose of the uh, nutrition or the circulation or the distribution of the uh, uh, nutrition that it is going to be used for by the muscular system for locomotion, it is going to be used by the nervous system to maintain the coordination between the different types of organs or the organ system. And if you recall in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about the role of the endocrine system and how the endocrine system is actually playing a crucial role in terms of maintenance of the homeostasis. So as the name suggests the homeostasis is the homeostasis means the home like environment. Okay. So uh, and, and all these physiological processes whether it is digestion, circulatory system, muscular system, nervous system endocrine system or the excretory system, their main purpose is that they want to maintain the home like environment or the homeostasis. And in detail we have discussed in the past why there is a requirement or why there is a need to actually maintain the home like environment because that actually gives the proper environment for the growth, that gives the proper environment for the reproduction 
and that also gives the proper uh, environment for the survival. Okay? So, because if there is a disturbance in the, uh, in the homeostasis or the parameters which are maintaining the homeostasis, then it is actually going to cause the development of the different types of diseases. And that is what is actually the ultimate goal of the homeostasis. And homeostasis is a condition which is always being challenged by the different types of disturbing agents. For example, there could be a fluctuation in the temperature, right? So that is actually going to be a factor which is going to disturb the homeostasis. And once this happens, then there will be a regulatory mechanism and that regulatory mechanism is actually going to readjust the equilibrium in such a way that it is actually going to minimize the disturbance and it is actually going to bring the disturbance back. So, homeostasis is largely being dependent on the many of the many types of the regulatory mechanisms. You remember, if you remember, we have discussed about the positive regulatory mechanisms and as well as the negative regulatory mechanism. And there are two main uh, components which are extensively playing a crucial role in terms of the regulation of the homeostasis. One is called as the endocrine system. The main purpose of the endocrine system is that it is actually going to maintain the coordination among the different types of organs or it is actually going to be an alternate system through which the messages are actually going to be conveyed from the one part of the body to another part of the body. And very extensively in the previous lecture, we discussed about the endocrine system. The other thing is about the excretory system because the excretory system is actually going to be used for getting rid of the waste product and that is how it is also going to maintain the water balance because the amount of water within a living organism is very important because it is going to maintain the different types of parameters like it is going to maintain what is the volume of blood, what is going to be in the living organism. It is also going to maintain the osmomolarity and all other kinds of parameters. And you know that the uh, all these parameters are essential because uh, of proper functioning of the different types of enzymes, organelles and as well as the cells. So, in today's lecture, we are going to discuss in detail about how the excretory system is contributing in maintenance of the uh, homeostasis. So, excretory system. So, what is mean by the excretory system is that it is a system which is actually going to be used for get rid of the weight product. So, from where this weight product is going to be generated, this waste product is always being generated by uh, or they will, uh, I will say they are actually the byproduct of the metabolic pathway. Uh, for example, uh, if you see the carbohydrate metabolism, right? Uh, so, if you see the carbohydrate metabolism and I am sure when we have discussed about the carbohydrates in one of the modules, we have discussed in detail about the carbohydrate metabolism. So, in the carbohydrate metabolism, we can have the glycolysis, we can have the Krebs cycle and, and we can have the pentose phosphate pathway and also on. And uh, after this two events, what we are going to generate is you are going to generate the large quantity of the carbon dioxide gas, right? And that carbon dioxide gas is not good for the human body because it is actually going to change because carbon dioxide, it is actually going to react with water and that is how it is actually going to form the carbonic acid. And that carbonic acid is actually if it's the carbonic acid or indirectly the carbon dioxide is not going to be removed from the circulations, it is actually going to uh, result into the change of the pH of the blood because carbonic acid is acidic in nature. So, carbonic acid is actually going to change the pH of the blood. So, that is why it is important that we should be able to get rid of the carbon dioxide what is being produced within the metabolic reactions. Similarly, we can have the amino acid metabolism uh, within the amino acid metabolism, uh, it is actually going to generate the uh, large quantity of ammonia, right? And that ammonia is also very toxic and it is going to be, it also has to be removed from the circulation. Uh, so, this is the reason why we have to study about the role of the excretory system in maintenance of the homeostasis. Uh, so, why is the 
secretion necessary we have already discussed in detail that in order for the cell to stay alive they must be continuously intake water and other the biomolecule which means they should always continue to take the nutrition and they also should take the water right so if you keep tainting the water for example if you keep taking the water it is actually keep accumulating within the body right and that's how you your volume of the body is actually going to be bigger and bigger so if the cell will continue to get the bigger and bigger they will only to in molecules right so if if you keep continuing uh, taking the molecules from outside right whether it is the nutrition or whether it is the water the cell size is actually going to be keep increasing but you know that there is a definite space or the definite size until which the uh, the cells can actually grow and that's why it is important that whatever you have taken for example your intake uh, whatever you have the intake should actually be able to uh, match with the uh, you know out, uh, output okay which means uh, whatever the intake you have taken by like for example intake of water or intake of the different types of nutrients right it should be resultant into the output whether it will be in in, the, in terms of the different types of waste materials or whether in terms of the energy so they must be exported molecules so they they whatever you take it there should be a out, output also and that's why you see that when you take the water it actually evaporates it goes out from your body in a different ways okay uh, now the question comes uh, from where these waste material is being generated so the waste material is being generated when the body is or when the organism is going through the different types of the processes for example it is uh, it is uh, going through a process where they are producing the energy right because the energy is required for the different types of processes for example the locomotion neural activities and circulatory system and so on so that energy is requiring the metabolism right so if, if you want to generate the energy it ha you have to run the catabolic uh, metabolic pathways uh, that means you are actually going to run the carbohydrate metabolism or the fat metabolism right and both the carbohydrate or the fat is actually going to generate the energy uh, and along with the energy it also going to generate the carbon dioxide and as well as the other kinds of the toxic material or the byproducts and these byproducts are actually going to be toxic so they have to be get rid of this similarly the organism also want to grow right because it, if it is going to take up the nutrition it also want to grow in size right and that grow in size is also requiring the protein metabolism right because the protein is the major uh, component which is responsible for the growth of an organism and protein metabolism means the amino acid metabolism right and amino acid uh, metabolism uh, involves the so many of the amino acids which are actually going to be ultimately going to produce the ammonia and that ammonia is very very toxic and that's why the organism has to be get rid of the ammonia from the circulation then the third event or third crucial point is the maintenance of the genetic information which means it is actually going to be this, uh, done by the synthesis of the nucleic acid right so synthesis of nucleic acid is associated with the nucleotide metabolism and that is also going to be responsible for production of the ammonia and what is also product responsible and since the ammonia is toxic it is actually going to be also contribute in terms of generation of the different types of toxic material so what you see here is that the, if the organism wants to continue its life it has to be generate the energy it has to generate it and uh, that energy is going to be used for running the different types of uh, physiological processes and along with that it also going to be used for the growth and if it wants to grow then it also has to synthesize the new and new protein so that it can be able to synthesize the new cell right and that's how it is also going to be run the uh, amino acid metabolism and that also is going to generate the ammonia and the third is it also has to maintain the genetic material of the body right because if the one cell wants to grow right it has to 
divide and form the two cells which means if you have one copy of DNA you also require the additional copies of DNA so that you can be able to maintain the uh, nucleic acid uh, pool of the, uh, uh, the daughter cells. So these are the three crucial events in which the body is actually bound to produce the different types of toxic material and these are the toxic material which are going to be removed. Uh, apart from the carbon dioxide and ammonia, there are many other type of uh, toxic material which are being produced within the uh, different types of organisms and uh, depending on which, uh, which uh, type of waste material you are going to use, it is actually going to utilize the different mode of the excretory system. So what are the different types of mode of excretion? Okay? So based on the excretory products like uh, just we said right carbon dioxide and ammonia, the five different modes of the excretory systems are known in the ammonia, in, in the different types of animals. They are aminotelism, ureotelism, uricotelism, aminotelism and the guanotelism. So in the aminotelism, you are the organism is very extensively going to secrete the ammonia. Then we have the ureotelism. In the ureotelism, the type of excretion is urea. Then we have the uricotelism. Uricotelism is a type of excretion is the uric acid. And then we have the aminotelism. Aminotelism is a, um, a type of excretion where the organism is actually going to excrete the different types of amino acids. And then we have the guanotelism where the type of excretion is the guanine, right? So guanine is a nucleoside or the base actually, nucleoside, right, nucleoside base, which is actually going to be secreted. Now the question comes, why the different organisms or different type of mo mode of the excretion is uh, taking place? This, all these modes are actually being dependent on the environment in which these organisms are actually surviving. For example, the ammonia, the removal of ammonia is associated with water and that's why if the organism has to remove the ammonia from the uh, body, it, it cannot, uh, because ammonia is very, very sparingly soluble in water, right? So what it can do is it can actually, uh, you know, dissolve the ammonia into the water and that's how it can actually be go out from the body. So depending on the water's availability, all these different modes of the excretions are being adapted by the different types of organisms. For example, aminotelism is very extensively being found in the uh, in the fishes, and whereas in the other organisms, for example, in the vertebrates, uh, the since the so much water cannot be used, the ammonia is being converted into urea, and that's how the uh, urea is actually going to be treated out, and that is been a very uh, you know standard way of doing it in the vertebrates. But if there is a scarcity of water, the urea or the, it's, then the excretory product is going to be uh, uric acid and that is going to be in the uh, different types of organisms where the water is very scarcity. Like for example, so many lizards which are found in uh, deserts, they are actually going to be used the uric acid instead of ammonia or urea because the conversion of ammonia to urea is also requiring the uh, some amount of water, right? And that is also very, very, uh, you know, costly for these organisms because they are, uh, you know, living in deserts so that they cannot survive. Uh, and the other mode also is depending on the, uh, the local environment, right? Depending on the availability of the different types of uh, resources, uh, these are the different mode in which the excretion is being performed by the different organisms. So if we summarize, uh, the different types of excretory products what have been found in the different organisms are ammonia, carbon dioxide, urea, uric acid, guanine and in some organism it is creatinine. And uh, the way it is actually going to be removed is like for example the carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is actually a gas, right? So carbon dioxide can be removed simply by the uh, oxygen which is present in the environment. So carbon dioxide, it is a waste product of the cellular expiration and it is dumped into the bloodstream and eventually removed by the lung. So there is, a, there is a complex mechanism through which the carbon dioxide is going to be converted into the carbonic acid and then this carbonic acid is going to be travel 
onto the lung surface and uh, from there the carbonic acid uh, is again going to be break down and that is going to give you the uh, you know the gaseous carbon dioxide and that is how the gaseous carbon dioxide is going to be exhaled out from the body. So, in this case what will happen is that carbon dioxide is actually going to react with water and it is actually going to form the carbonic acid and that carbonic acid is again going to be break down into the carbon dioxide plus water and that carbon dioxide is actually going to be ex exhaled out from the lung surface. So, this is the carbon dioxide what is present in the blood and uh, or the tissue right and this is the carbon dioxide what is present onto the lungs and through the lungs it is actually go out of the body. Similarly, for the ammonia, ammonia we have the different mode in which uh, the uh, ammonia is going to be removed. The one of the convenient way of removing the ammonia is that it can be removed through the water. And this waste comes from the cellular breakdown of the old proteins. So, when there is a uh, breakdown of the some of the older proteins uh, like it is actually going to release uh, so many amino acids and every amino acid has the amo amino group right and that can be when it is going to be uh, catabolized uh, or when it is going to be recycled that ammonia is actually going to be released and this is actually going to removed through water. So, ammonia is very soluble in water and that is how it is actually going to be uh, removed. It is also what makes the uh, bleachy smell. So, it is in high concentration, it is poisonous to the cells and must be removed, right? And the removal of ammonia is associated with water, removal of carbon dioxide is also associated with water, but it is being done by the gaseous exchange when the person is breathing, okay? Now, when we have the so many different types of waste, product we should also have the we should also have the different types of excretory uh, organs right. So, because not the same type of organ is can be able to withstand or can be can be able to handle uh, these type of waste products. So, we have I am sure you might have seen this right we have when we were discussing about the classifications that we have discussed about the different types of organisms whether they are present in porifera, cilantrata, cytanophora, latihalmanthes, astyalmanthes, uh, annelida, topoda, mollusca, echinodermota or the cardota, cordata and within the cordata we have the vertebrata and so on. So, all vertebrates whether uh, which are present in the cordata are actually using the kidney as the secretory organs and what they secrete with they secrete the urea right. Whereas, in the case of planaria, the planaria it is using the flame cells and flame cells is being used in the organism which is called as planaria. Then we have the nephridia, nephridia is being used in the earthworm. So, earthworm is belonging to a class which is called as the analida. Then we have the cockroaches and within the cockroaches we have the malpagian tubules and that is being used. And our, uh, and the cockroaches are being used, uh, is being belonging to the uh, phylum ortho, uh, orthopoida. Similarly, we have the prawns and the prawns are using the antenal glands. Uh, and what exactly these uh, uh, skittery organs are doing? The skittery organs are actually taking up, uh, skittery organs are taking up the waste material or they are collecting the waste material from the body and then they are uh, you know throwing it out from the body. So, what the excretory organs basically do? They are responsible for cleaning the blood by removing the metabolic waste, excess solute and the excess water and excreting them as in the form of urine. So, urine is a complex uh, waste product or complex waste material where you have the different types of uh, material like you can have the um, ammonia which is going to be present in the form of urea. Uh, within the urine you can have the different types of drugs which are going to be present in the blood or you can also have the different types of other waste materials. Uh, besides removing the urea, it is also removing the excess amount of salt, glucose and the reminiscent of the drugs. Uh, and that is why the reason that some of the, uh, in some cases uh, you might have heard about the that the people are testing the urine for the drugs, right? Uh, for example, if somebody is using the uh, 
the power enhancing drugs like the uh, in the in the some kind of athletes uh, so they will actually going to test that drug into the uh, into the urine and the excess water okay so basically uh, excretory organs have the major role of maintaining a water balance and they are also having the role in terms of uh, the removal of the waste material okay so waste material in terms of the urea or and the maintaining the water balance in terms of removing the excess salt glucose and the excess water now let's talk about the excretory organs so when we talk about the humans so humans have a very well developed excretory organs where we have the two well developed kidneys right so you have the uh, right kidney and the left kidney then we have the both of these kidneys are uh, you know very very vascularized so they are supplied by the blood through the arteries so uh, you can have the dirty blood which is going through the kidney in the veins and then the uh, there are arteries which are coming out from the uh, from the kidney and that's how they are actually containing the blood uh, the purified then the both of these kidneys are filtering the material from the blood which is coming through the into the kidney through the veins and uh, whatever the filter material that comes in the form of urine and that uh, the tubing which actually carry the urine from the kidney uh, is called as the ureter and there the ureters are discharging their content into a into a bladder which is called as the urinary bladder and the purpose of urinary bladder is that it is actually going to use for the storage of the urine and the uh, terminal end of the urinary bladder is actually a urethra which is actually going to be used for discharging the urine so whenever there will be urge to do the to remove the what uh, to urine then th these uh, the, it is actually lined by the different types of muscles and those muscles are actually going to be relaxed and that's how it the urine is actually going to be passed from the urethra now let's talk about the kidney so we have the two kidneys in the body which actually receives approximately 100 uh, 1100 to 2000 liter um, of blood right per day and uh, because the body has only 5.6 liter of the blood you can imagine that the blood runs through the kidney to be cleaned after every four minutes which means in every four minutes the our whole blood is actually going to be passed through the kidney and that's why the whenever you are actually going to generate any kind of waste material it is actually going to be removed right so and why it is so because it does not want that the waste material concentration should shoot up beyond a, uh, a particular limit and what is there in the kidney the kidney is a uh, is a is a is a vascularized organ where you have the different types of uh, nephridia or and within the nephridia we have the glomerulus and we have the nephrons we have the tubules and all these tubules are being used where the, there will be an exchange of material and that's how the urine is going to be retained into these tubules whereas the uh, good material like the glucose proteins and the other kinds of salts are actually going to be absorbed back and uh, and the kidney is uh, actually extensively being supplied with the high quantity of blood so it's actually going to be connected by a vein and as well as it is actually going to take up all the material from the kidney so it's going to bring the dirty blood or the unpurified blood and the, it is actually going, going to purified blood then the how the kidney is going to do a regulation of water level so if the blood becomes to dilute which means you are going to have the um, uh, large quantity of the water right uh, or it becomes too concentrated with the solute then it can interfere with the normal cellular activities right because it is actually going to change change the osmomolarity and once you change the osmomolarity most of the biological enzymes are actually going to be get affected so you can it can actually be you can imagine recall the, the situation like the hypertonic hypotonic and the isotonic solutions right 
and you always want that the body should maintain the isotonic solutions, but that's always not been possible because whenever suppose you take the food, a large quantity of uh, nutrients and as well as the water is actually going to be absorbed, right? So all that time at that particular uh, small moment, the the liquid, the water could be, the blood could be a uh, to be hypotonic. So in that case, some amount of the salt or other things have to be retained so that it is actually going to be again go back to form the isotonic uh, isotonic condition. And that is is the major function of the kidney, which means it is actually going to maintain the proper balance of the salts, proper balance of water and proper balance of different types of waste within the body. The kidney are able to regulate the water concentration in the blood by removing the excess of the water. So if you drink a lot of water, it is actually going to be removed that water um, so that it can avoid the, the, you know, the dilution of the blood, right? Or it may conserve, it may actually keen reabsorb, keep reabsorbing the water. For example, if you might have seen, right, here we have the different types of tubules. And the purpose of these tubules is that they are actually going to allow the reabsorption of the good material. So in some cases, when there is a scarcity of water, then there will be a more and more reabsorption. And I'm sure you might have noticed that when there is a, for example, when you are dehydrated, like for example, in summers, right, when you don't drink the water or when you don't drink enough amount of water, the these uh, reabsorption event is actually going to allow the absorption more and more amount of water going to be absorbed and that's why you might have seen that the urine the is actually color is changing it becomes deep uh, uh, deep yellow right and that is because the con the amount of water is being reduced so concentration of the toxic ends actually gone up and because of that or or the pigment what is present in the urine is actually gone up and that's why you it has shown a very deep yellow a deep yellow uh, color right so that is uh, something what is the very crucial thing for the human body or for an organism to maintain the osmomolarity because if there is no osmomolarity it is actually going to interfere many events it is going to interfere in terms of the uh, you know transport of the uh, biomolecules from the one part of the body to another part, it may affect some of the enzymes and their activities. And the same is, uh, you know, the it same is actually reverse. If there, if the blood is uh, too thin, which means it's lot of blood is, a lot of water is there, then the kidneys are actually going to not going to absorb the, uh, reabsorb the water. So it will, uh, they will allow the water to go through. And in that case, you might have seen that the urine color becomes pale yellow or almost whitish. So, uh, so that's why the, you know, when you go to a doctor, they always ask, you know, what is the color of urine and what is that? So, because that gives an idea of what will be the internal environment of your body, because that will give the idea whether you are properly maintaining the water balance within the body or not. Now, let's talk about how we are going to remove the urine uh, ammonia, right? So, uh, once it's treated into the bloodstream by the by the cell, right? Because the ammonia is actually going to be a metabolic byproduct of the different types of cells. They are actually going to throw these byproducts into the blood. The ammonia is going to be carried to the liver, right? And where it is converted into urea. So ammonia is actually going to be very very toxic. So ammonia is actually going to be get converted into the urea which is uh, less toxic right compared to so this is uh, toxic and this is going to be less toxic so body is trying to convert a more toxic material into a less toxic material so that it is easy for that particular material to transport and the other advantage is that the ammonia is a gas right so if you want to try if you want to transport the ammonia from the side of its production to the kidney that is not possible because the ammonia is a gas, right? So it has to be converted into a form which is actually a transportable form and the urea is the transportable form because urea is uh, water soluble. So it is actually going to be used. And then once it reaches to the kidney site, it is actually going to be, uh, you know, uh, 
put it into the kidney and then the, it will actually go through the different types of tubules, uh, ascending tubules and descending tubules and reabsorption and all that and the urea is actually going to be concentrated into the uh, in the form of urine and that is how it is the urine is actually going to be excreted out to the urethra. So, so it is then carried out from the liver to the kidney where it is being removed in the form of the urine. So, how the urine is going to be formed? So, if there is too much water in the blood, it is removed and put it into the urine and that is how the urine is actually going to be pale yellow or uh, clear, col clear uh, color. If there is not enough water in the blood, the kidney will not going to remove it and that is how it is actually going to be dark yellow or orangish color. Uh, if there is too much urea or other solute in the blood, the kidney will remove these excess solute and by regulating the solute numbers and the water volume, the kidney normally maintain the homeostasis in the blood solute concentration. Now, once the, since the kidney is doing so many important functions, the kidney's function also can be get affected by the many types of the functions or many types of the molecules. Uh, one of the hormones which is called as the ADH hormone, so it is called antidiuretic hormone that is actually going to affect the function of the kidney and it is going to prevent the excess water loss from the kidney which means it is actually going to uh, stop the, uh, stop the uh, so it is actually going to enhance the reabsorption. Similarly, when we have the alcohol, so alcohol actually is going to in, you know, inhibit the secretion of the ADH. If there is the in inhibition of the ADH, which means there will be a more loss of water and that is how it is actually going to increase the more amount of volume and that is why you might have seen that the people who consume the alcohol, they are actually urinating uh, more frequently because of this event only, because of the ADH. Then we have the aldosterone and that prevents the excess loss of sodium and the water from the kidney. Then we have the caffeine, so caffeine is present in the coffee, right? And uh, caffeine, what's present in the coffee is also increases the rate of salt and water loss from the kidney. And that's how the caffeine is actually going to be antidiuretic agent. Then it also increases the blood pressure. So increase the rate of the water loss from the kidney that also increase the blood pressure. So this is all about the role of the excretory system in maintaining the homeostasis. Excretory system is doing two jobs. It is so what the excretory system is doing is uh, in terms of contributing in maintaining the homeostasis is that it is actually going to remove the waste material and it is also maintaining the water balance. Okay, which means it is actually going to uh, it is going to regulate the amount of water what is being present in the blood. So that is why it is actually going to make the blood more concentrated or less concentrated. Similarly, it is also going to remove the waste material and these waste materials are mostly being toxic. So once you remove the toxic waste material, you are actually going to uh, not allow these waste material to disturb the homeostasis. Similarly, since you are going to maintain the water balance, it is also going to contribute in terms of the maintenance of the homeostasis. So, uh, this is all about the excretory system and uh, with this I would like to conclude my lecture here. In, uh, in this lecture, what we have discussed, we have discussed about the uh, role of the excretory system in maintenance of the homeostasis and how the different organisms are actually utilizing or doing the excretion in the form of different types of waste materials or waste products and how the different types of organs are present in the different organisms to tackle the different types of waste material. And in the end, we have also discussed about the uh, structure of the kidneys and the functioning of the kidney and how the different types of factors are affecting the uh, functioning of the kidney. So with this, I would like to conclude my lecture here. In our subsequent lecture, we are going to discuss some more aspects related to living organisms. Thank you.